Good friend Ricky B reporting in, going to give you guys some updates on the most uh, frequently asked question is, Ricky, can you give some some golden tidbits, some golden updates on the, the soy experiment? And uh, it's just basically to sum it up, guys, I don't really notice any difference. My weight's the same. My strength's the same. That's to say, I mean, I've made little progress in what I've been working on, which is, you know, it happens regardless of, you know, a soy experiment or not. Um, but it's to be expected. It's like a lot of you said. I mean, really, you can't know if your IGF-1 levels are naturally a little higher or not. Um, and as some people said, the best thing to do would probably have gotten my levels tested beforehand and then test them like a month later. So, can I? Can I? To see if they... Can I? To see if they boosted it all and if it indeed works. But... Um, yeah, I mean, just going off of feel, I haven't really noticed a difference. Uh, nipples aren't itchy or anything like that, though, too. So I feel like that whole, you know, soy thing leading to gyno and all that's kind of a myth. Um, hyper uh, sense, hyper sensi sensitization, whatever. I don't know. You get what I'm saying? Go, oh, kitty! Greatly exaggerated. So, I mean, I'll keep, I'll keep it going, see if there's a difference, but I think something like that, it's going to be uh, very small, if any, you know, noticeable progress with that. Uh, but that leads me to the next thing that I want to talk about, guys, and that's, Kitty, yesterday, I did the, the arms, and I, I, I dedicated an hour and a half to pumping those suckers up, and the best I could get, it was a little over 19 and a half, which is why I was so pumped, because it was, you know... Literally and metaphorically pumped and pumped, you know, mindset, pump mindset, pump biceps. Um, yeah, it was, you know, just just getting a little bit better, a little bit bigger. With a pump, that is. Not when they're cold. I don't know. I don't measure when they're cold. Why would I do that? Um, basically, I'm going to try that again today now. Granted, my arms are sore from working them for an hour and a half straight and as hard as I could, but... I'm gonna try today, kind of change my you know diet around a little bit. As you guys know, with the garlic, you know how much garlic should I eat to get huge? Listen, the garlic's not gonna get you huge, obviously. What garlic does, specifically when combined with vitamin C, is it just greatly improves your nitric oxide, boosts that. I don't know. You can look it up, Google it, but there's some research or something like 200% boost with. X amount of garlic and a gram of vitamin C or two grams of vitamin C. So I ate a bulb of garlic uh, just right now and I took a gram of vitamin C and I drank um, like six cups of green tea because green tea has been proven to substantially uh, improve nitric oxide production as well. So I just want to see if that leads to a bigger arm pump. That's really the main thing. And I know some of you guys are saying too, well, you should try out beets. Beets are proven to, well, listen, I have tried beets in the past and they're just, it's not as easy. Garlic, you just peel it and you pop it. That's it. Beets, I mean, I don't want to, what do you got to steam beets or something? I mean, I guess it's not that hard, but then I got to eat beets or I got to juice beets and it's just messy and it takes more time and it takes more effort. And I don't really trust supplements either. Like that's why I don't take a garlic supplement because you don't know like how good of the quality is it, right? Is it the real thing? Is it the, like just as potent as real raw garlic? Probably not. It's the same thing with beets. And speaking of speaking of supplements, I was uh, I saw one of Alec and Kiri. I think you probably pronounce it. His latest video on Bradley Martin and supplements and all that stuff too. And that was pretty funny because then I saw Freaky D commented about how he bought all these supplements back in the day. And he said, darn, that somewhat fit GNC salesman guy. And that got me laughing because uh, if you guys didn't know, about 10, 11 years ago, Ricky B actually worked at GNC for a few months um, just because it seemed like a super easy job. And with that being said now, if I can help out, help out all you fellow youngsters that watch this channel, whenever you go to GNC, just know that your sales associate is just some bro. Um, and they have this alter ulterior agenda to sell you what the 
managers and you know whatever territory directors or whatever want you to sell too. So like they're gonna they're gonna try to sell you the GNC stuff because that's what makes the managers look the best, makes the store look the best. And then there's different brands have their commission and all that too. So like if you go in there and like no 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 you should take this you should take this test booster. It's probably because you know you're a 17 year old kid. Why should you take a test booster? Well, because they get five dollars commission on that on that bottle. Or if you want to get some whatever some mass gainer or something like well that's a pretty good one. But this GNC mass gainer has. You know, it's got uh, it's got you know one gram less of sugar. Granted, it's you know got less calories, but listen, like it's just because they're making more commission off of certain products, right? Muscle Tech stuff gets you more commission. USP Lab stuff gives you more commission, and then you got certain things like with Gaspari or whatever got you zero commission. So of course you don't try to push those products. Um, long story short, you know I, I worked that job for a few months. I liked it because I just basically got employee discounted muscle milk that I would just drink the whole time I was there and you know red lines for like a dollar so it was pretty easy and it gave me time to study while you know nobody goes to GNC who goes to GNC I mean I can't imagine anyone goes to GNC anymore but granted this was you know over 10 years ago where still the internet wasn't quite as popular so it's probably more of a popular store back then but regardless Still a very easy job. Hardly anyone comes in, and when they do come in, you just got to steer them towards what makes you the most money or what makes the managers look the best. And if you don't sell X amount of products, then it makes you look bad, and then eventually you lose your job or something like that. So just know that if you go into GNC, um, they're not trying to help you, right? They're trying to steer you, maybe to help you as little as they can, but steer you in the direction of selling you products that make them commission. Um, and that's why, like. If I ever needed anything, I want to go into GNC because I don't want to deal with the hassle. Like I did that before. Like once I quit that job, I went into some other GNC. I was buying like NO Explode or something. Like oh yeah, but you know what, bro? You should try this uh, USP Labs. It's like listen, bro. I work here. I I worked at the store down the street. I get it. You're gonna make three more dollars selling me the USP Labs product. Uh, listen, you know, save it. You bite your tongue. I understand how all of this works. So just let me pick out whatever I want to pick out. You know. And uh, leave me be. Okay. So, anyways, that's the update with the things, guys. Um, I'm gonna work out right now. You know, pump some more garlic in, get some more green tea, get some vitamin C. See if I can get a bigger pump. And if so, well, voila! And you got a nice little cocktail there for maximum nitric oxide production.